Okay, what we're going to make in this project is a huge dome to go over the top of our scene, or our, our models, our landscapes, anything we make, which is so big that it appears to be a sky in the background. So it's effectively putting a real sky behind the scene. And to do that, what we're going to have to do is start off with an image of a sky. And I've just lifted this off um, Google Image Search. It's fine for what it is, but it won't do us for our dome because what's going to happen on our dome is the middle here of the picture is going to be right at the very top of the dome. Okay, that's going to be vertically directly above the scene. The edges around here are going to be where it meets up with the horizon. So it's where it meets up with the with the ground. So if you can imagine all this wrapped over half half a football, you're probably going to get the idea but we'll go through that when we hit Blender. So we do need to adjust this. We do need to make this image work. I'm going to quickly show you how to do it in Photoshop, but for anyone who doesn't want to bother doing that, I'll make the finished image available in the comments for this video, so you can just download it and have a go. So a quick detour into Photoshop. I've got the sky here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the elliptical mark marquee tool here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to well first of all I'm going to feather it up here okay and my picture here is about a thousand pixels by 500 pixels so it's about one megapixel in camera definition it's not very high resolution but I'm going to feather this by about 50 and uh, what that means is when I draw this now this ellipse this oval, it's not a harsh edge, it will feather it in 50 pixels either side. Now what I also need to do is I need to come over here to the eyedropper tool and I'm just going to click somewhere and select a mid-tone blue from the image. So I'm just going to click about there and you'll see that shade that I've selected has appeared in this box here. So if I selected the white from over here that would turn white. So wherever I click the tip of the eyedropper, that's the colour it picks up. So I want that to be blue. Now the other thing I've done is, because we've selected this, we've selected this bit in the middle, and we don't want the middle bit. What we want is the outside bit. So I'm just going to select an inverse, and now this bit is select, selected. And then what I'm going to do is just add a layer down here, so I'm assuming people know a bit about Photoshop to do this already. And paint bucket, tap it in, and you can see what we've done is we've put this sort of bluish edge all the way around it. And if I go select, deselect, yeah, we've got still got our sky, but it fades out towards what will be the horizon line, which is what a real sky would do. So layers, flatten image. File, save. And that's it, we've finished in Photoshop, so we've adapted our image and we're all ready to go in Blender. So I can close Photoshop down. So back in Blender, um, this is the flag tutorial that we did. Don't have to do this. Um, you could do this with just a blank scene. You could make a scene around the sky box. But I'm just going to add one around this flag just to give us some something to work to. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first of all i need my cursor to be in the middle of the world okay i need it to be at the bit where the x y and z axes intersect so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to view align view center cursor and view all and you can see the cursor is now right in the middle and then just like we've done before create and we're going to put a UV sphere in. We're going to put a ball in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make the ball huge. So I'm going to say 20. See, see how we do with this. I don't think that's going to be big enough. So let's say 40. forty. You could probably even go bigger than this. So if I come out you can see that I've, got, I've built this huge dome this sphere 
around the flag. Now I can actually come into um, object mode, so the viewport shading options here. And if I go to something like wireframe, you can still make the flag out in the middle there. Okay, now you could probably actually go a lot bigger than that, but I'm just going to stick with this for the time being. Um, so you can make it, you know, perhaps 80, 90, 100, 100, 100 units across, depending on what your scene was. But we'll just stick with this for the time being. So we've put in a sphere, and for this instance, 40 pretty much drowns out the flag. Okay, so we're back in object mode, and what we want to do is go back into edit mode because what we want to do is get rid of all the stuff that we don't need. Now make sure we're still in this wireframe mode and we're always looking for ways to reduce the number of polygons in a scene so the number of these squares or triangles in a scene and that means everything below the ground level here we don't actually need. So what we can do is that no because I know why because we didn't deselect first deselect all then Border select. And you'll see it selected everything below the ground level. And if I press delete, delete the vertices, and we've lost half the sphere. And we've now just got a dome over the top of our flag. So remember, if we render the flag, so I'm just going to press F12 on the keyboard, as it is at the moment. Let's see how that comes out. Okay, so there's our flagging you see, see on the background, not much going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our sky pattern inside the dome. And because the dome is so vast, what we can actually do is go inside it. So if I just change the mode back to solid view, and if we zoom in, you can see we're now inside the dome. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to apply the texture to the dome. And we do that just like we would with most other textures. And first of all, we need to go into the materials tab and we need well, first of all, we need to go into object mode, select the dome. So I'll pull out so I can see how it's selected with the orange line. Go back inside. Okay, I'm going to add a new material. I could give it a name I wanted to, but I'm quite happy to stick with that. And then I'm going to come over to the textures tab. And if I can't see anything, it's probably because I'm scrolled right down. Let's so scroll back up. Sometimes it does that. Okay. So if you can't see anything, just see if that scroll bar has slipped down. Push it back up. Add new. New texture. And then what we're going to do, make sure it's on image or movie. If not, just select image or movie. Then open. And that image that we've already made in Photoshop. So new sky image and this is the one that we've adjusted open image and you can hopefully see straight away that we've got a change in our dome surface so let's just press f12 and see what we get there and you'll see it'll probably be a bit of a checkerboard type effect with the same thing almost like tiles on each pane on so we don't want that so let's just press escape a couple of times to get out of that and we're going to scroll down here, still on the texture tab, up, up here. Okay, coordinates, and we're going to go to generated. Okay, let's try F12 again, see what we get. And ho hopefully now, the sky... Will pattern itself out. Now you'll still see these tiles as such in there. 
and that's because we've not smoothed the dome out yet. So all we need to do, one last thing, is we're just going to, with the dome still selected in object mode, we're going to come over to the modifiers tab, which is the spanner, add modifier, subdivision surface, and you can change how many it renders to and how many it previews to. So render three is usually good for most graphics cards. If you've got a high-end graphic card, you might go up to four or five, but three will do with most computers or Macs. So if you press F12 now, we should hopefully get a smoother surface. And we render it in the background and just to get the full effect of what's going on, we could try taking this up to rendered mode and hope and hopefully if we look straight up you can see that we've got this huge dome above us with this skylight texture on if, if we're looking at below there's, there's the flag over the, or the flagpole over there the flag's casting a shadow on it because it's it's a bit too close but you can see how the sky as appears as clouds above and then as we come down towards the horizon because we painted the edges of the picture blue it becomes blue and looks a lot more like a natural sky And then hopefully once it's rendered and you press F12, you should get something like this. So you can see still still a bit tiled in the background. So we can obviously um, change our sub our subserve divisions on that. But you can see we've got a bit of cloud coming in here. So we can just escape from that. And if we wanted to, if we select the dome again, I could select that and come into our modifiers and let's bang up the subdivisions to render five and then render that one out and that should really smooth off the sky but it will take it a few minutes to render even a still image and there we go there's um, one rendered out with the subdivisions to five on the modifier and subsurf so you see there's a bit of cloud in here and the cloud the sky is nice and blue so a result all around is something you can play with and do your own uh, versions of skies night skies sci-fi skies any sort of sky